I've used ashwagandha for 12 years and even I shed a tear during the Mauritanian. Whatever I say, it doesn't matter. This fucking island, I die here. Like for real, who the hell was cutting onions during that movie? So picture my shock when the internet was going ablaze with people saying how ashwagandha made them numb, made them emotionless. You are a stone cold bastard. This lady said ashwagandha made her crash her car and not care. About three weeks and already I had no emotions when I nearly crashed my, I nearly dead. I could have dead, yeah, and I didn't even care. Mate, she crashed it <laughs> and felt nothing. So that's my shot, like guys, what is going on here? I love me some ashwagandha, so why are they talking about my boy like that? It's time to investigate. In this video, we'll be diving deep into why some people might have this numbing effect. We'll also be reacting to some funny ashwagandha videos and I'll share my ways to avoid this side effect. Three ways to avoid the side effects. So if you want to get all the benefits of ashwagandha and leave out the side effects, leave out the numbness or emotionless, then watch this video. And for context, I should be the one that's feeling less emotional. I grew up with some real, you know, cold people, savages. You had to be a bit cold to survive in that environment. And also, sometimes I wake up, I look at my account, I'm not a millionaire. I'm upset. <laughs> I'm upset. These are real life emotions. But I've been using ashwagandha for 12 years and I still feel this way. So what is really going on? Something is not adding up. Let's dive in. Here's some of the videos of what people are saying. I take ashwagandha. I have no emotion. <laughs> I feel nothing. Ashwagandha is the biggest scam out there. I take nah, but imagine the fact that someone slaps you and you feel nothing. If someone slaps me, but everybody got d Yo, according to that guy's eyes, he's taking more than ashwagandha. I see some red there. I don't think ashwagandha gives you that. There's other herbs that might give you that, but hey, I don't know which those I are. I took ashwagandha for 30 days and here's exactly what happened. So I decided to take 400 milligrams morning and night. And the very first week, I did notice that my stress was lower. I felt more at peace, but by the second week, things started to take a different turn. I started to notice for the first time in a very long time, I felt depressed. By week three, I even felt even more depressed. It came to the point that I wanted to stop taking up. Look, some of this is just a little bit unbelievable. I mean, I'm gonna dive into the science of why this might be the case, but if you're feeling depressed after week two, the chances of you associating that directly with ashwagandha initially is very low. There might be other factors in your life that might play a role. So the fact that you know it's ashwagandha by week two, something is not quite adding up. But what does the science tell us? Now, here's what's interesting. From a scientific standpoint, we know that ashwagandha can have some effects on mood. Studies have found that ashwagandha significantly reduces stress and anxiety levels and it reduces sleeplessness and it reduces fatigue and it does this by reducing serum cortisol and this is a stress hormone so when we talk about reduction of stress we are talking about the cortisol hormone and this study showed that it reduced it less compared to those who are on the placebo and this is the good part also for the gym guys gym guys leave a ho in the comments this is Sparta! it's been shown to help boost muscle strength, help boost muscle recovery and help boost muscle size. And this is the likely reason a lot of people take it along with the supposed testosterone benefits. And simply put, ashwagandha is an adaptogen. And this means it helps promote balance in the body. Some emotions that we feel tend to be triggered by stress and anxiety. So when the body's out of balance and you have more stress and anxiety, you tend to display emotions like anger, irritability. So it might be explained that the reduction in stress, and when I say stress, I mean the hormones like cortisol, the reduction of which reduces these strong emotions. It reduces feelings of worry, fear, panic, anger, but ashwagandha won't remove these emotions altogether. So what is going on for those people who say it does, that they feel nothing? Well, I believe there's two parts to the story. I'm going to explain some potential hypothesis towards the end of this video. But in general, today, a lot of us are a lot more sensitive. We are so sensitive. We are used to being stressed out. We are used to the comparisons of others on social media and feeling a certain way about it. So what we believe to be numb is the body rebalancing. That is what normal is for us we're not meant to be getting upset or angry or emotional about every single thing there's certain things we can just take a breather for and react with a with a level of not being too attached to things but 
that's just my opinion yo the ashwagandha ain't ashwagandha and like i i, I don't know I, I don't know i don't know like maybe that shit has like a temporary effect but mm -mm, it's a no for me dog hey for firstly these things are not wonder drug you don't pop a pill and then all of a sudden you're just a completely different person unfortunately things don't work like that we're dealing with holistic medicine which means the body as a whole is getting rebalanced which might have some effects such as relaxation such as less likely to feel stressed but this is not a magic drug where if you take a vitamin c pill it, it leads to one action within the body for example that is not the case do not take ashwagandha I've been seeing discourse on this supplement all over my For You page these last couple of days. And I think it's very disingenuous from a lot of these creators to almost glorify a very, very, very dangerous side effect. Look, there's certain genres of music, whether it's rock music, whether it's, whether it's rap, that glorifies certain things. Some of these things can be dangerous, certain drugs, people are drinking, drinking lean. So to say like <laughs> ashwagandha and it's dangerous, very, very dangerous side effect. I don't know man, I don't know. I understand like that's the first video I got sent actually. But my man here, he seems like a good guy, but he, he definitely ain't cried in a few years, man. You know. <laughs> so here's why it might be happening. I'm gonna share three hypotheses now, and I'm also gonna share some conclusions towards the end of this video for you to potentially avoid these side effects. The first reason you're getting a side effect is the type of ashwagandha you'll take it. I can bet one pound, because I don't really bet over a pound, that any single person who's talking about not feeling emotional taking ashwagandha is taking one of four types of ashwagandha. One, ashwagandha KSM 66. Two, ashwagandha sensoral. Three, ashwagandha shodhan or four, ashwagandha in any sort of pill format and this includes gummies this includes tablets or the fluid liquid ashwagandha and if you look at any of these videos that talk about ashwagandha more than likely you're going to see a pill in the background here's one if you take ashwagandha i've got something really serious to tell you so studies are now showing that you do need to take a break every um every couple of months that you're on I mean, this that is a fact and we'll talk about that next but if you look deep into that video you'll see even though it's reversed what he is taking is ashwagandha ksm 66 and what you'll find if each of these ashwagandha so ksm 66 sensor rule they normally tend to have a tm towards the top right tm means it's trademarked ask yourself how the hell are you trademarking a natural herb? This is not a, a scientific discovery in terms of a pill. So why is these things trademarked? And what is trademarked is the way that these herbs are processed. And for some reason, these herbs can be promising 5% of the, of the active compound within it. Like how is that even possible to standardize the level of the active ingredients, whether it's the refinalize or any other active constituent within it. How are you promising that concentration? Which means there's something about your extraction process or your growing process that's slightly different. What you'll find with pills is that although they tend to be more beneficial, so you'll get more of that compound, which leads to that effect within the body, you might also be more likely to get the side effects because of the level of concentration of that plant. So we know that ashwagandha is positive for reducing stress hormones and that's cortisol for example and there's a correlation between cortisol levels and serotonin while this is not fully understood this could be one of the reasons why you might feel a bit number as the levels of cortisol drop the anti-cortisol effects can be impacting serotonin which thus impacts your mood and low serotonin on the other hand is linked with depression is linked with feeling low and there's also a link between serotonin levels and dopamine levels which is your reward function which is your reward hormone or neurotransmitter within the brain that makes you feel good about getting things done so if both of these tend to be reduced you're going to feel the will to do things reduced but also your mood reduced for example we know from research that rats who are given ashwagandha some rats who have a preconditioned issue with dopamine these rats with ashwagandha increased their GABA and their dopamine levels reduced. So in high amounts in humans where some of us already are overstimulated by watching corn or consistent use of social media, especially TikTok, these can make us potentially more susceptible to these impacts. These are just 
my opinions and because these extracts have such high doses or concentrations within them they can give more of a sedative quality you can have a sedative quality which means your emotions in these states can be dulled but they're still present in a dulled more integrated way and this is why some people might feel a bit number and i've tried to simplify it a bit you know although i'm still not convinced because people on social media everything tends to be a lot more sensationalized because that's how you get to the top of the for you page i'll discuss this further towards the end of this video so stay tuned but hypothesis number two <laughs> there tends to be an overconsumption of things that make us feel good my name's synonymous with gluttony overconsumptions of things that make us feel better i've mentioned in previous videos when i talk about how to avoid side effects that because something makes you feel good doesn't mean you should take more because taking more won't make you feel better remember here we are talking about holistic medicine it doesn't really work like that i've seen people taking too much of a good thing for example holistic medicine herbs are not meant to be taken every day it's not a pill vitamins you can take every day that's for everyday use while herbs were meant for healing for rejuvenating and it's not every day that you find issues so what i normally tell people is like look take something for three weeks take a week off and if you have different herbs you can cycle you can go from one to the other but instead what i've seen is people abusing they're kind of abusing ashwagandha they're consuming too much and taking it too often so i decided to take 400 milligrams morning and night and morning and night so look that's an issue this guy was taking ashwagandha twice a day 400 milligrams morning and night what the hell are you taking that much ashwagandha for <laughs> like you wouldn't take vitamin c twice a day you wouldn't take it there now you'll take it once and that's it and a better format you know you can do three weeks on one week off and this can be on a daily basis too which means you do not take it every day but you might take it three times a week and research now tells us something i've been talking about for years is that you shouldn't be taking these things consistently for too long give yourself a break it says some of these issues could arise after you take it continuously for eight weeks and i've been advising this on this channel since the channel started here's a quote that i've heard from a good movie it says look you got a headache you take a pill you take one pill ibuprofen or whatever it might be your headache might go you take too many pills and that's going to be your last headache that's the end of your headaches forever and that kind of signifies what i'm seeing with ashwagandha the emotional effects of ashwagandha tend to be subtle and gradually develop over time with regular use and in high doses so here's what to do if you want to avoid it one try natural powders an organic natural raw ashwagandha opposed to pills and extracts with trademark names in it my personal opinion although the research on ashwagandha tends to be on these extracts such as ksm66 is mainly because for one it's trademarked these companies can afford to put money into the research but the original plants have been used for thousands of years in their natural formats why are we going against what's natural in my opinion so if you go for natural yes the benefits might be less intense they might be less strong but most people here who are taking ashwagandha are not in dire need of a medicine what you actually need is something to help you balance day to day and improve your well-being so high doses of ashwagandha might not be what you want to actually use you might just require something simple to help you get you through the day get you some gains in the gym help you sleep a bit better and help you reduce stress don't think of ashwagandha or any herbal substance as a vitamin have it as and when it's needed when you feel like you're out of sync and you need some balance have it don't abuse it don't use it consecutively for over eight weeks take breaks everything in life needs breaks there's a season for everything and lastly do not use too much too soon start with a v small amount and gradually increase how much you use to see if your body responds well to it hope you get the benefits of ashwagandha without the problems and before you go check out these four mistakes people make whilst using herbs check it out here peace